Hello everyone, um, this is Don, and in this video training session, I'm going to be covering page creation and editing. Um, this training session will also kind of cross over into like some menu management, and we'll also be covering the contact component where you can manage your contacts. Um, let's begin. First of all, when um, we speak of content on your page, we're talking like about static content pages. Um, for example, the About Us page or maybe our location, these just different pages that um, were created just as content on your site. So um, <clears throat> let's first look at the About Us page. So here's an About Us page, which your site would probably have as well. It could be named differently um, depending on what you want to name it, or it could be um, completely something totally different. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that's the cool thing about this system. It, it's really up to what you want or need. You can do it. So if we jump into the back end of the site. Now, to get into the back end, of course, you'll need to log in through the administrator. So you'd go your domain, whatever it is, www or dot your domain, um, whatever your domain is, dot com, dot net, whatever, and then forward slash administrator. And that will bring you to login page, and then you'll use your username and password that would have been created for you by your project manager. Um, so, um, so now we're on the back end. Let's go ahead and let's jump to Static Content Manager, which is what we're talking about today. There's other types of content, but right now we're just talking about the static. And you'll see on this site that there's the page about us, which let's jump to the front. You'll see, oh, there it is, the about us page, okay? So back here, you're gonna get introduced now to this little thing, which is called the WYSIWYG Editor which stands for what you see is what you get. And what it's doing is you can type in here, you can use these different formatting buttons, very much like Word or Off Open Office or Works or any of those other programs, and they will do the formatting for you of the text and stuff. But it is actually creating, let's go look at the source, it's creating HTML, which um, allows you to create this information, but in regular, as you'd say, visual view of the rendered content. But like I said, it's putting all the image tags, the image tag with the path to the image source, all that for you. Um, <clears throat> so first thing I'm going to do is make a change here. Let's go to this last bit of text here. I'm going to put it, a, here we go. Select it. I'm going to take it out of italics, italics, and I'm going to make it bold, and I'm going to put it all underline. Okay. Now I'm going to come up here and hit save. Save my change, and it closes it too. Save, closes it, and saves it. Let's go to the front end, and let's refresh this About Us page. See, up oh, there it is, bolded and underlined. So just a quick example that you can see that. You can make changes to your content that's already there um, and do whatever you want using the editor. It's your site, your content to manipulate as you see fit. Um, now, let's go back in the back end again. We're still at our list of static content. We're gonna create a brand new page from, from scratch. So let's go up here to the top right here and you'll see new. Click on that, we'll create a new page. Now, this page hasn't been created yet because we haven't hit save. If we hit save now, you'll see we have to have a title. So let's give this page a new title. This is going to be called New Website Page. Um, that's the guy, now of course this is not a great title, but they, it's just a demonstration training session. Um, title alias, the title alias should be a bit more descriptive of what this page is. So I could say this is this page is about or just say um, it's new page content. Again, a horrible description, but that's what the title alias is. It's to be used kind of in place of the title of the page, because of course the title could be something that is more um, marketing or generic, and it doesn't really tell you what the page is about. You should make it a good um, page title, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, so it's descriptive, and the person that sees that page title knows what it, what that that page is about. 
but don't you don't have to you should um, so anyway I filled in the title alias which is optional now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to type in some text page is new on my website okay and then I'm going to hit save <coughs> you'll see here new website page right there now the important thing to, to note right now is that I have a new page for my website if I go to the front end of my website I can't get to that page there's no links yet to that page there's no menu items or maybe a link in the content of the site anything like that so even though I do have new page here with you know content on it and that I have no way for anybody to navigate to it so we're going to do that next. Now, you can do multiple things to get to a web page. You can create a link within another page. You can have a menu item that links you to that page. Um, you could also use, like, for example, the front page slideshow if you have it, or the banners to link to that page. There's many ways to get to a page for your users to navigate. <coughs> so let's go in the back end again. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go to the About Us page. And I'm going to create a link from this page to my other page. I'm going to go down here at the bottom and I'm going to say, type in here, link to new page. Okay. I'm going to select that. Whoops. Fix my typo. <laughs> I'm going to select the text. Then I'm going to use one of these nifty little tools up here, which is the link button. Clicking on it as a pop-up and I could at this point type in a URL like to say www.stoysnet.com and that would take me to stoysnet.com my website or company website or in this case I want to link to another page or content article in my site so I'm going to say your content then I'm going to have a drop down and I'm working on static content right now go static content okay then the article, I'm going to say it's going to be new website page. Say OK. Hit save. Let's go to the About Us page on the front end. And you'll see that here is a link to new page. Clicking it takes us to the new page, the new website page with this page is new on my website. Not a lot of content there, but again, just trying to show the, the functionality and the ways that you can get to a new page and how to create a new page from scratch. Okay, let's jump to the back end again. Now, the other way that I want to get to my new page is maybe I want to have a menu item that links to it. To create that menu item, I would go into Menu. In this case, I'm going to put it on the main menu. And again, your main menu may be in a different place on your front end of your site. But for this site, the main menu is right here. This is the main menu. And then I have a footer menu too. Um, but right now, main menu. So I'm going to come here. And I'm going to go new at the top right. Now, you have lots of menu options. Because, of course, you have lots of different things you could do with the menu item. We're just going to link to a static content page. So, so don't get freaked out about these. A lot of these are like just, they're just organized to help you get to certain things that you need to get to. Like maybe a shopping cart list, a manufacturer brand list, um, a component to um, like a component, which is like a, cal a calendar component or your um, contact component or multiple things. But here we're just going to go to link to static content. And again, there's a lot more information on this in the help documentation, which you can get to here, as well as videos on this. But we're going to do a brief overview of it. So link to static content. Clicking on this will give me another form to fill out. And I'm going to title my menu item, new page. Now it's important, again, another important thing to understand that a menu item is just that. It's a menu item. It's just a placeholder where if you click on it, it takes you to a page or just something else. But um, you can name it whatever you want. It doesn't have to be the same name as your content article. So 
then I'm going to select my static content, which is new website page. Okay. <clears throat> I have other options down here, but I'm just going to stick to this one right now. Um, again, we cover all these different things in the other help documentation and videos. So I hit save. Okay. Let's go to the front end. Go to the home. And you'll see there's a new menu item called new page. If I click that, that will take me to my new page. Again, very simple example demonstration. I'm going to do one more thing, which is the menu item, just to kind of get you rolling a bit more with menu management. So if I click on new page to edit it, and I could change the name again here if I want to, but I'm actually going to say that my new page needs to be under the contact us menu item. So I select it as the parent and not the top level, but the parent which is going to be contact us. Come in here and hit save. Now let's go home again. You'll see that that menu item to new page went away, but if you mouse over contact us, there's new page in the drop down. Okay. So we just created two links to our new content page. One was from another page using the link um, editor in the content in the WYSIWYG editor. The other one was a new menu item. So let's jump in the back again. Let's go to home. And from here, let's go back to our static content manager where we can talk a little bit more about using the content editor itself. Let's go back to our new website page. Okay. Open it up. And I'm going to actually do one thing here to show you. I'm going to maximize this editor. You notice it pops up so I can see what I'm editing, what's my page. Okay. Next, I want to show you some of these tools and what they're used for. <clears throat> here you can do a find. So if you're looking, if you have a lot of content here, you can do searching for the content, find and replace. Here you can also do spell checking. And if you turn this on, it will do spell checking as you type. So this is a bad word. So you, you notice, oops. So then you can click here and go, oh, what is it? Oh, there it is, bad. So it kind of finds the bad words for you, just like other editors. Or you can turn it off if it'll, if it'll annoy you. And then you could just um, hit the spell check and it'll go through and look for words. So, finish checking. So no bad word, no bad spellings in this so far. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's um, talk a little bit more about these. Here is a form that you can create. It's a form guy. I'm not going to go into that because we can go in more detail on this later. But again, you'll see that there are some styles you can do. There's bold. There's italic. There's underline. There is strike through and then you can start doing subscripts again the best thing to do is for you to play with these things when you come in here also you can do list or number so then when you turn to so on so forth um, or if you select them, you can change them all to be something different. Whoops, sorry. Bullet points. Um, the indent left, indent right, all these different things you can do. Um, there's also another one, which is the table. Insert just like with Microsoft Word. You can use the table, so you can create a table. And then you can use the, let's see, let's say that looks good, say OK. So now you'll see that you have a table here where you can type in different text here, and then maybe some text over here. So and so forth. Um, and maybe what you could also do is maybe put an image in this field or this cell. So you click this and insert the insert an image. Let's browse the server. Let's 
go ahead and let's get this internet man guy just double click on it bring him oh you'll see that he's pretty large too large so let's reduce him down still too large I think let's go to 140 there let's do alignment left bam so and then I can put text over here Okay, as well you can do cell, table properties. Go to the cell properties, say vertical, top. Again, all the same type of stuff that you see in common word editors. So, um, now let's um, let's see what else is there that we can talk about. Oh, let's talk about formatting. As you can see, like if we select some text here, normal is the paragraph format. Now on this site, if we jump to the front end, you'll see that there's a blue color here, as well as there's a style here with a background of you know kind of purplish blue and the white. Um, those are all different fo formats. I'm gonna show you. Let's um, go ahead and bring these down a bit. I'm going to say paragraph style. And then I'm going to say header one, header two. Now, yours are going to be styled differently on your site because your designer would have, or project manager designer, would have done your style sheets to match what you want to have happen on your site. So what we suggest is rather than coming in here and changing the font size and the colors all individually, you should always stick to this format here. So you can choose the different formats. And so here's some um, paragraph, which is already normal. That's the normal one. Let's go ahead and do header one. Do header two. Do a header three. so on and so forth. And then let's go ahead and um, minimize this. Come up here and hit apply. Now, you'll see that you get a representation on the back end, but you really don't get to see what it looks like until you view it on the front end. Let's reload. So there you go. Here's the paragraph text. Here's the header one style, which is very much like this style. The header two and the header three style. And here's all my other text. Okay, let's do a couple more things. Um, let's go ahead and let's look at the link editor. So far we have this guy here that's underlined. Let's go ahead and make this a link out to my Astro website. Let's do that. Select the Astro website because I want this to be a hyperlink. Select it and again hit that link button. And we're going to go to A-S-T-R-A-T-O-Y dot O-R-G, the Astrotoy Org website, okay? And <clears throat> let's go to Target. Let's say it's going to open up in a new window um, blank, okay? Say OK. Um, so I've created a link there. The other thing I can do is I can hit this guy, and if I go back to Insert Edit Image, I can also create a link from here too and say new window and call it http www.astratoy.org and say OK. Um, there you go. Hit apply. So we're saving it, go to the front end, hit reload. There we go, Astro website. When I click it, it opens up in a new window and takes us to the astrotoy.org website. Same with the image. I made the image a clickable image. So if I click it, it also takes me to the astrotoy.org website. 
Okay. Um, <clears throat> of course, my page looks horrible. I didn't really design anything for this or type anything in. This is more of a representation of how to use the WYSIWYG editor and come in and create. Um, there are many other things that you can do here. For example, insert um, a page for printing, insert horizontal line. You'll see there's a horizontal line there. Um, if you have flash elements, you could insert those. Um, iframes, um, you should know what iframes are, but right now I'm not going to go through that. Um, and of course, there's your text. If you want to go through, you can come through here and you can like change the color of text individually, maybe make a background color and change the size. Okay. Hit apply and it should look really bad. <laughs> Hit refresh. There you go. Again, you have a lot of different options, a lot of different control, a lot of different flexibility. And of course, like I said before, if you ever needed to edit into the code, you can do so by clicking into the um, source code, drag it out, and you can then see and edit in source. Um, the other thing I'm going to cover really fast um, is meta information for your um, content. The tab, meta information tab allows you to put in a meta description for your page um, to give you an understanding of what meta description is. A meta description describes your page. I tell people less than 200 characters. I would suggest try to do it like 150, 160 characters. And who uses this meta description are search engines. Uh, for example, let's jump over to Google. Okay, and let's search for, I don't know, um, let's see, toy blocks, okay? We've searched for toy blocks. Now, the information that you, if you see here, one, you'll get the title of the page, which in our case, if we jump to our title here, would be new website. So our title is new website. If you can see that now, if I mouse over it, out of the world toys new website. Um, if you, you'll also get the URL, and then what you'll also get is this bit of descriptive text here, right? This little descriptive text is created from the meta description, and so it's important that what you use. Like if you notice, it only displays so many characters. So you really want to be able to, in those short period of characters in that meta description, describe what your page is or what it is you're trying to link to. If it's product, whatever it is. Um, and then they'll be more likely to make the decision to click or link on it. As well as Google, the search engines will know what that page is about and help put it in their search results. So, um, so for example, I would write up here, uh, my new web page for my website. Again, not a good description, but you get the gist of it. You would put that in here. Keywords today in search engines do not use keywords, at least, you know, they currently are not. They may start, who knows what they're doing, but keywords, um, keywords have been kind of abused not just kind of they were abused quite a while ago and so they quit using keywords a few years ago but what I typically use the keywords field for is if I'm doing any search engine optimization content I'll store my keywords in here so for example I may put new page and website page and maybe just page and web page and if you notice, I'm separating them by commas and just going on and so on and so forth. Um, and that's what keywords, really keywords are not being used for anything. And both of these are optional. I highly recommend that you do your description, your meta description, and make it, you know, a good one that defines what your page is. And there's short, concise, you know, a couple of sentences. Um, and keywords, again, if you're doing any keyword analysis, and you need to know what keywords to use. You can put them in here so you, that way you know what you used and what were the, on this page and what were the important ones. Um, let's go ahead and hit save. 
Okay, and let's jump to this page again, and I'll show you. Can I select this, copy it. Let me open up Firefox and take a look at that guy. Oops. Um, so I just put in that meta information. If I right click on this and I view page info, you'll see that here's my description and here are my keywords. So this is what the search engines will see. One, they'll see the title, they'll see the, you know, the, I'm sorry, the URL, the title of the web page, new website page. Um, they'll see all this other stuff as well. But the keywords in the description are the important ones and the title and the URL. Um, so that's it for, I should say, um, content and articles, new static content page. Let's now go look at another thing, which a lot of people will have to do or manage on their sites. If you click on this training site that we have on the contact us page, you'll see that there's a couple of different contact information, um, locations in this case. So. This contact form page um, allows you to um, keep, you know, change your address information, um, phone number, everything else. This is all managed in the components, contacts, manage contacts. And right now I have two contacts on here and I only have one category called contacts. For some of you members of ours out there um, that are more of a larger company, you may want to have, you know, all of your contacts as well as their employees on here as you know so if they're doing certain divisions or branches of your company or maybe categories of your um, or sections of your store or if it's um you know one of our manufacturer users you could have your different branches and maybe like the warehouse the billing all that stuff you could keep in your contact list that people could then come back here and see who they should get a hold of on the front end of their site so well, let's click on the Newberg one to edit. And you'll see here that you can change the name. You can actually add a person, you know, give it a name of a person and then put their position in there, as well as their email address, and street address, phone number, everything else. And then you have an editing page here that you can um, put in whatever description that you want. Again, you can edit the source. In this case, there's an iframe here, which if we go to look at the source, is actually um, this the Google iframe source that they got when they searched for that address and they just pasted it in here which then gave them a Google calendar I mean sorry Google map to show off um, let's go ahead and jump back you also have the ability to add days that you're available or your store business is open your store is open or you can do that in the content as well the good thing about this is this this will get used elsewhere on your site or can get used elsewhere in your site. So um, you can also assign images um, to your um, contacts. So if there are people, you could actually upload pictures of your employees and that would be, um, or the employees, and they would be assigned to this so they could see who they're talking to, so to speak. You also have parameters which you can turn on and off, show certain things. Um, hide certain things like the position. If we put in the position here, we could say, um, say this is Don Hayes, my name and who I am. I am the uh, webmaster of this company. And then I could hit save. And if we go back to the front end, we'll see. Let's reload that. Say it's Don Hayes, and of course I had a huge thumbnail up there that I shouldn't have, um, which is very important to not use a big, huge image. And you know that's that's a good example. Let's leave that thumbnail there. Let's do something else really fast. Let's go um, back to our content manager. Actually, we'll use the one that's on this guy here. Let's browse for that tuba guy. Okay, it's right there. I'm going to right-click on this guy, and I'm going to say resize. 
Um, let's just make it a small 90 by 90. Okay, and say OK. And if you notice, it made a resize and it said small. Okay, let's go ahead and quit this guy here. Go back up here, go to images. Oh, actually, we're going to have to refresh here. Close. Images. There it is. Hit save. There's my small 90 by 90. And, there, and you could also put the image within the content information as well. Quite a few different options. Um, and that's that's pretty much all I'm going to be covering in this training session today. I, those are the items that you know people typically try to control or create or manage. Um, so again, if you have any questions, we do have our help documentation here. If you click on the help, it'll take you to all the help documentation, and it'll cover in here is all the stuff that I covered today plus a whole lot more. Also, if you go to um, YouTube. Oops. And look up STN Training or go to YouTube user STN Training. This is where we have all of our videos for our training sessions, and that's where this one is actually that you're watching right now. Um, so, with that, I will end this session, and I hope you enjoy it. Have a great day. Bye.